I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you're going to learn the correct way to calibrate your battery charger, not the half-assed way that I did it a little while ago. Stay tuned. When I released that video about how to calibrate the ISDT battery charger, I, I tried to be really explicit that what I was showing you in the video was the mechanical steps, the button presses that you need to make in order to perform the calibration. But that my actual method of determining that the charger was out of calibration and then figuring out what the right calibration value should be, yeah, that all... That was pretty half-assed. Uh, basically, I just took a bunch of battery checkers, checked a bunch of batteries, and when they were all off by about the same amount, went, yeah, it's probably off. Now, I maintain that that method is probably good enough to get you within the, I was off by like two-tenths of a volt, and I maintain that that method is probably accurate enough to get you more accurate than you were. But many of you criticized me, and rightly so, for not using a more rigorous method. Well, today, I've got the more rigorous method. Now, in that video, I showed you a $350 NIST calibrated certified fluke meter, and I said, this is what you got to do if you want something accurate. And people in the comments pointed out that actually you can get pretty accurate meters much cheaper than that. In fact, I'm going to show you a $20 meter that is just as accurate as that fluke. And people in the comments pointed out that what you're really paying for with the fluke is the safety of knowing that when you touch those probes to a 600 volt line, that 600 volts isn't going to come out the probes into your body. It's the safety more so than the precision. And in fact, if you're using low voltage like we are, then yeah, you could kind of go with a cheap meter as long as you get the right one you can know that it's accurate and there's no safety issue because you're working with 5 volts or 12 volts, so it doesn't really matter. This is the Anning AN8008. Say that three times fast. It is like my sixth take. <laughs> uh, and at first glance, it looks just like any other $20 China special meter, right? But it's actually, it's actually a really good value for the money. Number one, it's generally really, really accurate. But like I said, it turns out that accuracy is not that hard, yet, yet people still screw it up. But it also has 9999, 9999 counts. And I, I actually struggle to explain clearly what counts is with a meter. So I'm not going to try. I, I feel like I understand it, but every time I try and explain it, I get talking circles. And suffice it to say that a, the more counts a meter has the more precision it has. Now let's pause for a second and talk about precision and what precision is versus what accuracy is. Accuracy is how close to the correct value your measurement is. And precision is how much vari sort of internal variance there is in your measurements. Uh, so for example, if we use an analogy of like shooting a gun at a bullseye, accuracy would be how close you are to the bullseye Precision would be how tight your grouping is. So you could imagine a scenario where you are very precise. You got a tiny, tiny little grouping, but you're consistently up and to the left of the bullseye. You can imagine a scenario where the shots are centered perfectly on the bullseye, but there's kind of like a shotgun spread. So that's, you're accurate. On average, you're dead on the bullseye, but you're not very precise. And of course, accuracy and precision is what we want out of a measuring device. Now, the next question that we have to ask is, how accurate is that meter? In other words, when the meter says that we've got 5.000 volts, is it actually 5.000 or is it 5.002 or 4.998 or whatever? And to answer that question, we've got this little device. Now, this, I really got to thank you guys for showing me that this exists. I'm so excited uh, to show you this. This is a K-Moon voltage reference. And... It's got a little, it's just a commodity, of course it is. It's just a commodity part that you can buy. You can just go to DigiKey or Mauser or wherever and just buy a five volt voltage reference chip. <laughs> and you just feed it, I don't know what, it just spits out five volts. And it's not just five volts, it's like 5.000 whatever 
to the nth degree volts. This still device does, it takes one of those voltage references and it puts it on a circuit board and it actually gives you some convenience. The chip itself is like three bucks, but this is like 20 bucks, but I think it's worth it. It has, it's variable, so it can do 2.5, 5, 7.5, and 10 volts uh, reference. And it, uh, it's got a built-in little one cell LiPo down there and it's got a USB plug that you can plug in and it'll charge the LiPo up so you can use it in the field without having it plugged in. And K-Moon, this is why you buy the K-Moon, K-Moon have gone on the back and they've used a super precise multimeter and they have written the actual numbers on the back on a sticker. So my 5 volt reference is actually 5.00049. That's a lot of precision, right? And I know that. So this is what we're gonna use to test how how accurate and these we're going to check all this stuff i'm going to check my chargers i'm going to check it all but first let's check this meter and we'll put the meter into volts dc mode and i will take the k-moon voltage reference and i'll turn it on and it's right now at 2.5 volts which the sticker on the back says is 2.50071 now we're only going to see 2.500 because with this, that's how many digits or how many counts this meter has. Let's see what we get. 2.500. It said, oh, 2.499. The 5 volt reference is 5.00049. I'll just push that button one time to switch. 5.0049 should read 5.000. See, if I wiggle the probe just a little bit, I get a slight change in the voltage, but it's pretty darn close. It's one one thousandth of a volt off. Seven and a half volt reference, 7.50194 is what the sticker says. 7.500, pretty darn close. And 10 volt reference is 10.00116. 10 10.001, 9.999. That's the one that's the furthest off, but it's not off by very freaking much. So we will call this meter accurate enough for our purposes anyway. This is the Innova 3320, and I've used this meter. This has been my favorite meter for years now, and let's find out how accurate it is. 2.5. 2.5. That's pretty close. 2.49. Notice it's only got three digits on screen, so that means it might be 999 counts. I don't actually know how many counts. That would be my guess. 4.99 on five. That's pretty close. 7.4. It looks like it's reading just a smidge low consistently. 9.98. That's uh, it's not spectacular, but hey, it's not terrible either. Now I'm going to measure the voltage on this battery, and uh, the way the balance connector works is that in between each two adjacent pins should be one cell's worth of voltage. So I'm gonna start with this one, and I'm gonna go and touch this one, and I get 3.817 for cell one. Now I'm gonna do the second and the third pin. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see how accurate this battery checker is. And I happen to have a second one, so let's try it out. Well, that one's a lot closer. It does look like cell one is a little further off than the others. And here's the ISD T8, and we'll see how close my calibration was. Uh, we can see here that each of the cells is reading about uh, 0 0.1 volts low, more or less, but they are all pretty consistent. None of them is too far out. Uh, and I, I maintain that I did, in fact, bring the charger more into calibration than it was before via my half-assed method. Nevertheless, we can see that we're a little bit off. And so let's go ahead and bring it into line with those values. 3.817. Now here I'm checking the total pack voltage to calibrate the output port on the charger 
and I want you to notice that my meter is reading 15.26 volts, whereas before it was reading 3.818, 3.814. Before I had three digits after the decimal point, and here I've got only two. Where did that extra digit go? And the reason is that, again, I've got four, ba basically four significant figures of precision here. So since I've got two digits to the left of the decimal point, I only get two digits to the right. So you'll get additional precision by measuring single digits of volts when you get to double digits, or if you were at triple digits, of course, you wouldn't get that extra precision. And now this charger is dead freaking accurate. Now I'm going to go do it for all my other chargers and see how accurate they are. Well, that's pretty good, honestly. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> that's within a thousand, within a couple thousandths. I call that accurate. Can you calibrate this one? I mean, is that even possible? Yes, you can. Aw, oh, damn. Oh, yes. Well, I think you get the point. Uh, once you have a calibrated voltage reference and a meter of sufficient precision and accuracy, then you just go through and you calibrate all your stuff. You check it to see how calibrated it was, accurate it was from the factory. And uh, yeah, just the world is your oyster. The minimum that you need to do what we're doing here down in the one one thousandths of a volt is a 9999 counts, 9,999 counts meter. Uh, this one's 20 bucks. I've got a link in the video description. And also I'll give you a link to the, I think it was around 45 bucks. It is a 20,000 count meter. It gets you even more precision if you so desire. Um, the real advantage of the 20,000 count meter is that once you get up into 15 volts, you'll still get those three digits. At the, I think so. Anyway, I'll put a link in the video description. You can decide for yourself. How accurate were these ISDT chargers and battery checkers? They were, they were to the tenth of a volt accurate. Not that accurate, really. A tenth of a volt's not really asking that much. Um, it's nice that we can calibrate them. And I feel like some people have said, well, you really shouldn't be promoting these uh, if they're not going to be accurate from the factory. And being off by a hundredth of a volt, is that going to, like, how much uh, how much uh, lifespan will that take off your battery if you're accidentally overcharging it by a hundredth of a volt or putting it to storage at a hundredth of a volt off? Probably not. I mean, many people are doing it and not noticing the difference. So uh, on the other hand, you know, if you were to spend a little bit more money, would you get more precision? Well, I'd be interested to repeat a test like this, uh, you know, buy some high end, like, you know, an eye charger or something and see how it does. Is it is it dead accurate from the factory? I'd be interested to know if you have tested yours. Let me know in the comments. But for me, at least, I feel like there's still value in these goods. Um, for the price of 20 bucks to get this awesome voltage reference that I kind of wanted anyway, and a super cool accurate meter that I'm going to use the heck out of, now I can go and calibrate all these things. And now I've saved a ton of money on chargers and checkers and stuff and compared to more expensive stuff that might be better calibrated from the factory. And all I had to do... So it's really your call. I like to give you the choice, I think. I think everybody should have the choice to either spend money to avoid the hassle or to save money and go through a little bit of additional work. And that's obviously where ISDT falls for me. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your questions down in the comments. Happy flying.